Okay, you guys, this is the snowblower that was given to me today. And supposedly it's missing the drive. And I don't know if it's missing the drive for the auger system or if it's missing the drive for the wheels. Uh, I'm just going to try something. When I squeeze this handle right here, uh, it stops moving, right? See that? And then I let go and it moves. So it's the auger system, but luckily for me, or unluckily for me, it is in the back here. And I've done one of these before. See what I'm turning that? I know I'm thinking of you, Thomas. Oop, where are we? I'm turning that, right? The augers are turning. You guys are getting a good view of that? Let's just do one good one here. It sounds, there's no, no grinding sound at all. Yeah. So all I gotta do is fix the auger drive on that, and it looks like it's the main pulley. And that's the exact same problem that I had with this guy. My 832 John Deere snowblower right back in there. So let's go get, I gotta go cut some lawn before it rains. And uh, thanks guys, Oops, we'll go back here. And we're just gonna park that snowblower right there for now. Right there, you see behind my tractor. So we got John Deere, John Deere, John Deere. Hard to sell them when you own them. Oh, and a John Deere here. So two John Deere tractors I've got, and now two John Deere snowblowers and one Sears snowblower. All right, this is a drive pulley for a John Deere 524 snowblower. This is the belt for it. And these are the chains that have never been on that snowblower. And a nice fella gave me that stuff today. Okay, very windy. I've got my compressor, a little one, my baby, on the, on the hand truck. Because it's too heavy to carry from the house these days. I'm going to put some air in the tires of this John Deere TRS, I believe, yes, TRS 24, or that could be a 5. No, that's, yeah, 5 horse, 24 inch, anyway. Right now, the tires, I hope, still have a bead. All right, and we'll stick you here out of the wind. I hope you can, so as you can tell, the weather is not as wonderful as it has been and it's time to think about the other side of the world when the white stuff comes. Well let's just see what we got. Come on baby! Yay! I think these take 15 to 20 pounds, doesn't matter, I'm just taking it to the garage, right? I tell you, I'm getting good at this. Let's put a few more in there just to see. And if it goes bad, we're gonna... Okay, I've tried transmission fluid in the tires. I lost the front end tire of my uh, John Deere 180. <laughs> I had transmission fluid all over the place. But then I guess I guess I'd have green slime all over the place too, right? So let's check this one out now. Oh, this one has no cover. Or no tire trailer valve cover. Come on, baby. Come on. unplug this. Did you guys get all that? I hope so. Wow, strong wind today. Sorry about that. 
Okay. Can you guys prop yourselves up somewhere and we'll watch the rest. I know the lighting's bad. Sorry about the light. Be right back. Let's go. We got the John Deere TRS 24 into the garage. And we're going to have a look at it now. So it came, the gentleman that gave this to me gave me all these belts and a set of unused chains. And for the amount of sidewalks I have, that's pretty sweet. So let's just hang those there. And put those up there. Step one. All right, back on the chair so you guys can see. So first thing we got to do, safety. I think that's the, oh, that's the auger drag. Okay. Explain that. So, auger drive, wheel drive. Oh, no, that, oh, yeah, this is the chute. That's not, the chute is on the ground right now. This is the uh, wheel drive. Well, it's a five speed, but it's whatever the little rubber wheel picks, right? Six speed. I think that's neutral there. Right there, sorry. And then over on this side, we have all the usual, we have all the usual suspects. Choke, throttle, key. It's nice. Not very often you get the key anymore. You usually have to bypass that. Uh, shoot controller and shoot. Uh, just a quick look at the tines. And they don't look too bad, right? Nothing's bent, doubled over. Looks like a bit of a Zuba on that one. No, it's got the same thing on the other side. And they wiggle on the shaft, which is nice. My other John Deere snowblower, the augers are rusted onto the shaft. Could never get them undone. So this is either an AC start uh, right here. You plug the extension cord and go zoom, right? Or we can pull the cord. Right now, it doesn't feel like it has a lot of compression. So what I'm going to do first of all, oh, by the way, I did check the oil. Are you looking this way? Kind of, eh? Let's look up just a little bit. It's got oil right there. So let's just get the spark plug out of here and we'll carry on to the next event. BR6ES. Well, that's a weird size, but it does look like it would fit. Now a BPR 6ES fits a Honda, so that's a completely different plug again. 
I've never seen a BPR, a B, a BR 60S. Oh, hold on. Whoa, baby. So I'm going to do this in two stages. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of, well, any lubricant will do here, right? So I'm going to stick a little bit of transmission fluid down that throat. First of all, we're going to go slow here, eh? and we're going to just lubricate the rings if we can. And I'm going to see if it has any compression. Oh, it's coming. Okay, so that's a good sign. Now we're going to make some smoke if there's a spark. So now we're going to squirt a little bit of, oh, let's just. Uh, starting procedure. Neutral. Three quarters bunny rabbit. No choke. Turn on. Right? Is that on? To run. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to squirt some go juice down that plug. Yeah, I'm going to have to look this plug up. Now it might spew out some oil here, so I'm going to aim him away from Frank. Back over that way. And you guys can come and watch the fun if it fires. Right? This, this thing's probably been outside, oh I'm guessing 10 years. Right there. Now I should feel some compression with that oil in there. Yeah, a little bit. Wants to. All right. So now, <laughs> do we put some fuel in it? Yes! There's a nice manual shut off on this guy. So let's put some fuel in it. This, this says good old fuel. Well this is a good old engine so we're going to do it. This is two, so this is now, yeah, half a tank of fuel will work. We're just going to let it sit for a minute and see if it drips. Now it should drip, it should start flowing through now. It should drip when we prime it. Yep. Look at that, eh? It might run. If he, uh, let's check the electric starter now. He did a good job of putting it away. Um, I never did show you something. The author is not going to turn on this because uh, it's it's got it's broken. Oh, it's leaking like a it's leaking. I'm just gonna get a tiny little hammer and tap the carburetor to see if it'll stop leaking. Starts though. Uh, let's just see. Cool frog, a little bit of choke. the gas. It's got a great little gas valve here. We'll just turn that off. Come on. So it runs, but it's got a leaky carburetor. Well, we can handle that. 
So now let's look at one more problem. Are you still with me? All right. We have to get this cover off of here. Dead. Well, that's pretty exciting. Engine runs. So if you look, uh, light. Do you see? I'll lay that in there if I can. Hmm. There we are. Do you see right in there? On, on. I'm going to move the impeller. Watch out now. Think of Mr. Uh, Mr. Haney. But you see that shaft is turning? Right there. I have the pulley for that shaft. Where is it? Right here. I have the pulley for that shaft. But he never got it on. Um, I don't know what the reason to that is. So I'm going to start it just a little bit. We'll use up some of the gas in the, in the carburetor and we'll see if this guy will walk forward. But the, one of my problems right now is the, uh, the chute. Oh, shoot! Joke. It's got a little puddle of gas here. That's not the end of the world. You guys know I have to more gas. Good. Okay, we're going to just, I'm just going to temporarily attach this. I don't have any idea why it isn't attached. This might not ever come up again. If I had control with the chute. This is a little bit nicer snowblower than the one I've got. I've got a Craftsman. Nice. Hmm. Okay. Now, I'm doing 10 things at once, as usual. Where's the holes? Um, we got a hole there, there, and there. We got a hole there, there, and there. Right now the ship is pointing back at the at the operator. Not a good lock washer, but it'll do. Man, I'm struggling. Gotta go from the inside. There. Should just about do it. I might as well use it if I can feed it on there. Well, uh, this will be fit one because there's no lock washers on it. And anything with a snowblower, you have to have lock washers. Okay, here we go. One more bolt. And at least then we'll have shoot mounted. I'm just going to move it forward and back now. Okay, there's no more lock washers. I want to see if it walks forward. Okay, we're going to start it up. It still has gas in the carburetor, remember? And we're just going to see if, it, if the rubber drive wheel is viable. Okay, let's get some windows open in here and uh, wipe up some of this fuel. Yay! Perfect. 
All right, guys, that's step one. It does more than I'd hoped. Okay, believe it or not, the furnace just came on, but I'm having my buddies, Steve O Space J, go there and subscribe. He's getting close to a thousand. Steve O, S T E V E O Space Capital J. He's the guy that does all the body work and all the, he has all the talent around here. So anyway, uh, the only thing, other thing I wanted to check with this little guy before our drippy carburetor runs out of gas in the bowl, because I have the gas shut off right here, is to see if this thing will actually start, I shouldn't need to choke anymore, on uh, on electric start. So are you ready? She's a gem. Oh, here's Mrs. Pender. Hey! All right, my friends, we're back on the John Deere TRS-24, or in other language, the John Deere 524. Five horsepower, 24 inches wide. Right now, we're gonna split this snowblower in half and see if our new pulley is gonna fit. <laughs> Although, I have to weld the new pulley, so I'm not quite sure if I'm I'm into that today or not? Hmm. Now, what happens is you take these two bolts out there and there, and same on the other side. There, and down there, eight inches. And then it just cracks apart nicely. Well, I guess I have to check it anyway, right? Because the uh, pulley that I'm going to stick on there is this one. And it has to be welded. But we don't want to we don't want to go through all that unless we know it fits. So I guess unfortunately we're going to have to take that we're going to have to break this uh, snowblower in half. But it should go very very well because there's no belt hanging on the output drive for the auger and the idler pulley for the auger. Hmm. So, yeah, there we go. So let's do it. What is that, nine, a half inch? That's nine sixteenths. Yep, half inch. I was totally right. But my guess on the socket was wrong. So let's just see what we can do with a rattle gun. been apart before I mean that's why the chute isn't connected because the chute is part of the uh, this chute is part of the, the blower housing one more to go and she's gonna fall apart Whew, and I mean fall apart eh? excellent I see. All right, now we're going to lay this back down again, and we're going to disconnect the cable. And I think we can use uh, BSS small engines cable removal tool. Or if I, I can't take this bracket off. But I can disconnect this. So let's just try this. Okay, so we have to undo that. <laughs> Seven sixteenths or three eighths. Now I wonder if I could spin that up.
You got it, Carter. At least this one is a five horse, not a ten. The tens are really heavy. The old tens, I should say. Now remove this set item out of the way for a minute. But this is an exploratory surgery we're doing here. Now this is bolted on barely, so we can use it. And we'll just tilt this auger over to its back. Okay, that bearing's good. In fact, it's so good, though I think it's new. Okay, let's get our pulley. Even just the uh, arbor part of the pulley, or whatever you want to call it. Now, I think it's going to have to go on like that. Do we have a grub screw in there? Yes, there is a grub screw in there. Right on top of the keyway. Now, we don't need this. Well, it's been beat on. I am just going to uh, get a file. File is your friend, as Rogue King says. to become a knuckle. Oh, look at that, how easy that is to turn. And no noise. All right. <clears throat> okay. So now. Good. So I wonder now if one of the problems that the gent that had it before me, because he took it this far, we know he had it this far, right? Is that, uh, is this going to be too far away from, how can I put this? Is this going to be too far away from here? Let's get some measurements. I got a hunch the steel comes right up to here. So now we're going to come over here and just do a few measurements. Right down there. We're going to get a heat measure, just to start. And some light. light. So can you guys see right where I'm uh, working? Right there. Knee pads. Okay, so that I gotta look at that. Yeah, it comes right to there. Ooh, that is just ever so rickety, eh? Okay? So the edge of the pulley comes to one and a half inches to the inside edge. One and a half inches to the inside edge comes in too far. I think that's what his problem was. Yeah. This is the tough stuff, guys. I've been through this before on my old John Deere 